Okay, now we're gonna get into pretty much the cream of the crop. These are pretty much from here up, it's gonna be like, there's almost always gonna be a use for this, uh, depending on your build. Um, I think that a good place to start with this would be um, recoil boost. Um, there are a lot of moves that are recoil based, like uh, takedown, um, wild charge. Uh, I don't know. Um, double edge that do a lot of damage and they are well they'll do some damage back to you uh and being able to boost the damage that you do with those moves is pretty good i don't i think they're i don't know if there's a cap to the amount of damage that you take back on the moves in this game like the only time i ever i've ever really seen it is when enemies do it to me or like one time i like recruited a togepi that nude <laughs> excuse me new not nude um new double edge uh and it, i think i think it did 15 damage to the togepi every time it did it and i wasn't really paying attention to how much damage it did to enemies when they used it on me but uh if if there is if that is the cap then that's not bad. Um, I, you, I could see recoil boost being used there. Uh, re moves that also count for recoil boost are hyper beam, um, giga impact. I don't know if there are other moves that force you to spend a turn uh, recharging. That's technically called the recoil status in PMD. Um, and Charging up your hyper beams and your giga impacts is pretty cool. Uh, I don't think that those moves are great, but they're not like you. You could do worse than those. So, like if this, if you're putting this on your it, team, if you're using this sort of strategy, then this could be good. Personally, I don't think that recoil moves are that great. Um, I'm thinking like things like jump kick, high jump kick. Um, you know, they have a chance to miss and then do a bunch of damage to you. I don't think that they're that, that, they're that, that consistent. And I think that you are going to end up using a lot of healing items or require a lot of healing support if you go for these tactics. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of it, but I could, I could see it being kind of useful. Um... The next thing I'm gonna put is tight for not there, tight formation. What tight formation does is, uh, if you have your team together, uh, like pretty much, like you would always do if you were using "Let's Go Together," um, which is probably gonna be the most common tactic used, especially when you're in like harder dungeons. Like I could see you using. Um, like go the other way if you're in an easy dungeon you're just trying to find the stairs really quickly like i do that when i'm doing like missions or jobs in like lower level stuff like you know you have to go to great canyon to see zatu to get the wing or whatever it is which <laughs> i don't like that you have to do that but i'll save my reservations for another time uh but yeah, I like to use uh, go the other way for that. So if you're using that sort of tactic or if you're only bringing one Pokemon into a dungeon and you're not really planning to recruit other Pokemon, then tight formation is not that useful. But if you are having all of your Pokemon together, uh, this is where it's gonna be useful. I, I don't think I explained the effect of it, but uh, what it does is any room range moves or moves that attack, I think it's just moves that attack multiple members of your party. So it could be things like Thunderbolt, but I know things like Magnitude, uh, Blizzard, that, that are these room range moves um, will have their damage reduced as long as you have members of your party near you. This is great if you're in a dungeon that has a lot of Pokemon with Earthquake and Magnitude. 
So I'm thinking like the desert, I think it's called the desert region, um, that have a lot of trap hinch that love to use earthquake on you for some reason. Um, I'm pretty sure Silver Trench has a couple Pokemon that can use some room range moves. I, I think a couple of them can use Blizzard, but I'm... I'm not, I'm not quite sure. It's been a little while since I've uh, done done it. And also, I generally tend to kill Pokemon before they even get the chance to hit me. Um, but yeah, I know you've been hit by a discharge. I know you've... <laughs> where, where was this when I was in Temporal Tower in uh, Explorers of Sky, right? Um, but yeah, I know you've been hit by discharge or earthquake or magnitude. You, like, it did a lot of damage. And maybe you're trying to recruit some Pokemon and you didn't... For some reason, you didn't bring an escape orb. Uh, and you don't want them to die and you don't want to use a lot of your Reviver Seeds. Well, type formation is great for that. Um, it's also great when you're early on in places like Magma Cavern, um, where Pokemon will have moves like this, uh, and you're like kind of weak, you, maybe you're, maybe you're like a Torchic or uh, one of the fire starters that uh, will take super effective damage from it. Uh, this will help you survive those sorts of hits. Um, I will say though that I generally would advise you, if you see a Pokemon, that can use a room range move or is using a room range move you use your room range move back on them you the trap pinch is using earthquake on me well i'm gonna use blizzard on it uh and just get rid of the problem uh before it becomes a real problem <laughs> uh so that's why i wouldn't put it super high but overall i think it's pretty useful I guess another limitation is that you may end up fighting Pokemon or may end up going into a dungeon that where like none of the Pokemon have moves that fit the bill for type formation, in which case, like, you don't it's not gonna be used. And for those dungeons, then this thing would probably be like a not very useful, like a D tier sort of rare quality, but when you are in that situation, you definitely like having type formation. The next thing I'm going to put is Strike Back. And um, this is the one sort of rhythm based attack. Rhythm based, at not attack, rhythm based rare quality that I think is actually pretty decent. Uh, mostly because it's great for boss fights. And what it does, if I'm not mistaken, is. Uh, when you get attacked, the thing that attacked you, it's going to drop its attack and special attack. Um, that is really, really good against things like, you know, Rayquaza. That boss fight's not easy, uh, unless you're going to cheese it. Um, and this is a decent way to cheese it, <laughs> you know? D keep dropping Rayquaza's uh, attack stats so it can't do a lot of damage to you so that you'll actually maybe survive some of its attacks. Um, yeah, I would recommend it uh, if you're going for boss fights. Uh, now, outside of boss fights, it's not that useful because a lot of the regular Pokemon are either not going to do all that much damage anyway, uh, you're going to kill them before they do any damage to you or you're in like Joyous Tower and Wish Cave and uh, Purity Forest where you're level 5 and it's not the danger is not one Pokemon coming to kill you the danger is two or three so yeah but great for boss ones um I think the next one I'm going to put, and I wouldn't be opposed to making this one higher on the list, but for right now, I'm going to put Notorious Restoration. What Notorious Restoration does is every time you eat something that gives you health or that gives you belly, it increases the amount that you get, I think by 1.5 times what it is. So like an Orin Berry is going to heal... Uh, 150 health, uh, a big apple is going to give you 150 belly. Um, 
But then like even things like a plain seed is gonna give you three belly instead of two. Now I don't think that that's a huge deal. I don't think you, like eating a plain seed for belly, you're in a very tight situation or you have a different uh, rare quality, which I think is a little better than this still. But this one's not, this one's not bad at all. Um, there are going to be a lot of times where you're going to have to use an Orin Berry to heal health on your Pokemon. And, like, when you're in the later game, when you have a lot more health, this is going to be great. Um, now I will say, like, the Orin Berry thing is not, probably not going to be that useful in the main game when your Pokemon have probably less than 100 health anyway. Uh, but, like, the... The apples being able to heal 75 belly uh, is going to be great. Um, you know, like like the big apples healing 150. That's also like that's okay. But the fact of the matter is, unless you're like expanding your belly by eating another big apple. Like, it's not gonna do... Like, you don't really need 150. Like, 100 is pretty much all you need. So, like... If... If it made eating a big apple increase your belly size as well... Like, up until you get to, like, 150, then this thing would be a lot better. But, for now, it's, it's pretty good. Um, I admit it might be a little better than I'm giving it credit for. But... Uh, I, I like this. I like this ability. Um, I, I do like a, other abilities a little more. I think next I'm going to put Lonely Courage. Um, I know some people might say that this ability is not as good as I would. And, you know, that's, that's probably fair. I might change it later. Like, the, when, when we get higher up, especially in this B and A tier, is where I'm starting to be like, I don't... Mm, I'm not necessarily sure where to put them in relation to each other. Um, but I like Lonely Courage because I think there are, there's something to be said for uh, having this in situations where you're going to be forced with, like, one party member, like Purity Forest, uh, and having that boost. Or... If you're going to if you're going to use a strategy where you split up the team to help you find uh, the stairs faster for a not hard but not easy dungeon, so like if you're going to somewhere like Grand C uh, or one of the other like new like you get slammed with a bunch of new stuff after you beat Rayquaza, one of those dungeons where it's like not an easy brain dead dungeon like the other dungeons before Sky Tower would be uh, after you've beaten Rayquaza, but like still pretty easy enough, like easy enough that you could split up. This could help you save a lot of time. It could also help you save a lot of resources. Um, Another, like, I think this would be a great one for Buried Relic, because 99 floors, that's a lot of floors, and it would save you a lot of time, and again, a lot of resources, to be able to just split up the party and go through, and, you know, Buried Relic is easy enough that you probably could split up the party uh, once you get to, like, things like level 45 and up. Um... Yeah, so not bad. I would say though, I, a reason why I would say I would say this is not like an A rank ability is that you oftentimes you're only going to split up the party in a dungeon that's kind of easy, a dungeon that you feel like you know pretty much you could solo it, and if it's already that easy, then why do you need to buff yourself? to make it like even easier like you should probably be fine anyway um now it's safe the reason is for safety um and it'll also ha maybe help you uh save some of your max ethers you know if you can one shot a pokemon instead of uh you know two shot it so there's that um and there's also like you know 
for everything that's not Purity Forest, and e like even once you start to be able to recruit Pokemon in Purity Forest, um, like it's not necessarily optimal to stay by yourself. So, you know, that's why Lonely Courage is like not so much higher, and that's also probably why I might I might put it down a little lower. Actually, mm, yeah, I think I'll I think I'll put it below recoil boost. Uh, not not below recoil boost, but just above it. Yeah. So my bad. I I think I should have. I think I should put this about there because it's it's okay. It's it, it helps your it increases your safety when you have to be by yourself, but you would rather not be by yourself. So like mm, that's a big limitation to it. Um. But yeah, the next one I'm going to put... This is going to be the last one for B tier, by the way. I think there are a lot of really good abilities in this game. Um, the next one I'm going to put is Squeeze Out. Uh, I know a lot of people really love this ability. And a lot of people might say this is an A rank ability. A lot of people really don't like it and probably would put it like towards the bottom of a C. I think it's pretty good. But I admit that there are better ways to go about it. So what what am I what am I why am I saying that? So what Squeeze Out does, and I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with this because it's what your Absol would become would come equipped with when you uh, first recruit that. It's also I think what Zapdos and I believe either I think it's Articuno, but it might also be it might be Moltres instead. No, I think it's I think it's Articuno will also come with Squeeze Out. At least I'm pretty sure because like when I recruited them the two times that I've fought them uh, to recruit them, they came with Squeeze Out, so I'm pretty sure they come with the same thing every time. But I might be wrong. Um, anyway, what's you know everybody's probably going to be familiar, but for those who aren't, uh, what it does is anytime you have an ability. Not an ability, excuse me, a move. With zero power points, uh, there's a chance that while walking, you will regain one power point. And that's pretty good. It means that you might not necessarily have to use as many max ethers on that move uh, because you can kind of ride out that zero to going back to one a couple times. Uh, if you're in situations where you don't necessarily need the move, uh, when, and it's at zero, then, you know, you can ride it out. It helps with your longevity. It's great for, it's great for longer dungeons where you're like, I don't really want to use my max ethers or I don't have any more max ethers or elixirs. So I'm just going to have to, I'm just going to have to go with squeeze out. Um, now I will say that those ish those, those sorts of situations don't come up that often, especially if you play resourcefully. Um, if you're bringing enough max ethers and elixirs with you, and also you're going to be able to find them in most dungeons at a fairly, fairly steady rate, um, then, like, then squeeze out's not that great. And also, like, if you've got, like, if your room range move, like, Blizzard is the thing that's at zero PP. You know, that's that's gonna be really that's a really big gamble because it's like when you go into when you get monster housed or if you have multiple enemies in the room and you really need that blizzard, uh, you're kind of like on a coin flip whether or not you're gonna be at one h one pp, which may not be enough to kill everything, or zero pp, so you won't even be able to use it. So, yeah, I would say that this is a m ability that is really good uh if you play safe but it is not a crutch it is definitely not a crutch um i would say like if you end up getting a, a pokemon with this especially like uh recruiting it in the dungeon it's not bad to keep around uh but of course there are going to be better ones like your a and s tier so the next one that I'm gonna have, which I think is the 
kind of better version of Squeeze Out. This is why maybe you could argue Squeeze Out could be in the C tier. Uh, if I was going to put it in C tier, I'd put it at the top. Um, this tier is very hard for me to order, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> so I just have it in this order right now, but I would not, I would not be opposed to changing the order. But the next one I'm going to have is PP Pouch. And what PP Pouch is, is that after you beat a Pokemon with a move, you could, you could regain PP back on the move for beating them. And now I, I don't believe, uh, I don't believe it's every time. I think it's sometimes, I think it's just sometimes. Um, and that could be really good because like, you know, you use Blizzard and you have a pretty high chance to get some PP back on it if you're using it to clear out a monster house. Um, so, like, it'd be great. Uh, I will say again, just like Squeeze Out, this is not something to rely on. This is just something that will help you out. Um, you could argue that Squeeze Out might be able to give you more PP. Maybe in some situations where like you, you it's going to one-shot the enemy and then you're fine with letting it be at zero as long as you're using your other moves and then that thing will come back. But like I, I think in more situations PP Pouch is I'm gonna give you back more uh, PP, but again, like this is not a great substitute for just having max elixirs or max ethers. Like you would much rather have those. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna put is Wary Walk. So Wary Walk is great because uh, sometimes it will help you find traps on the floors, and it will also sometimes disable those traps. I would put this thing a lot higher, but it only has a chance to break the traps. Um, I think it's a pretty good chance. Uh, I, have, I haven't tested it to see exactly what percent, but uh, I know that I have been in situations where like, I'm just walking through and I step on a trap and I'm like, oh crap, but Wary Walk breaks it. So I'm just like, oh, okay. But I've also been in situations where I was not thinking, and I or like I had Wary Walk on, so I was like, yeah, I don't need, I don't need to switch to my Goggle Specs Pokemon, and just stepped on a trap and then took took it. I would say a lot of traps, not definitely not every trap, but a lot of traps are not so bad, um, especially if you're in a easier dungeon. Like a blast trap's not going to be that detrimental to you. I mean, if you're in a harder dungeon, it could be pretty bad. Um, and not to, not to say that you want to step on traps, but I've been in a situation before where my all of my Pokemon were starving, and I couldn't find any apples, so I was like, okay, I need to step on an apple trap, and just let one of the things in my inventory turn into an apple. And, uh, because I had Wary Walk on one of my Pokemon, it was kept breaking all the apple traps that I stepped on, so I was starting to, I was really starving. Now, I was able to get through that dungeon, um, but like that's that could be a case where Wary Walk is like actually detrimental to you. Now, in the vast majority of situations, if you are good about bringing your resources and keeping them uh, for when you need them, which I was not, I was very much just giving all my apples away um, to Pokemon that just pretty much die immediately. <laughs> um, Anyway, yeah, Wary Walk is in the vast majority of situations really good. It could, it doesn't, because it doesn't have a 100% success rate at breaking traps, like it, I wouldn't say it's a great substitute for not bringing goggle specs. Um, and because of that, because I'm inclined to bring goggle specs, I'm not inclined to keep Wary Walk. But if, like, I don't know, if you don't have goggle specs or if you don't want to use them, then, you know, Wary Walk's pretty, pretty good. Um, the next one I'm gonna put is Link Boost. Linked moves, I think, are really, really good. Um, they've, they've always been good. Uh, if you're trying to play really optimally, like speed runs or like, I, 
intentionally trying to do a low level run, which again, I'm not saying that this tier list is for that, but if that's the sort of play style you're going for, Link Boost is not bad. Um, of course, I'm sure if you're doing a speed run, you're either going to go for the most optimal gummy or reset uh, if you don't get it. Uh, not gummy, the most optimal rare quality or just reset if you don't get it. But like, like Link Boost is not necessarily bad. Uh, you're going to be using Link Boost. Uh, for these lower level runs or these like speed runs or just in general like link moves are pretty good um they use up your belly a lot quicker which is could be a not a great um you could have a pokemon that's not necessarily good with linked moves or doesn't necessarily have linked moves that work well together um, in which case, then, this is not great for them. Uh, or, I guess... But, but I think a lot of Pokémon do like to use Link moves. I, I don't know off the top of my head whether or not this works with, like, a status move and the into an attacking move. I will research that later, probably put an annotation on screen to confirm whether or not that is the case. But, uh... If it is the case, then I like to, I really like to use Swords Dance linked with Night Slash on my Absol, then Link Boost would be really good to boost that Night Slash damage. Now, I don't necessarily need it because if I critical hit, and even if I don't critical hit, I usually will kill the target that I'm uh, looking at, but like um, for a bosses, uh, or in the case of like really hard dungeons, this might be, this might be good. Um, I will say, the one thing I don't like about Link Boost is that, again, I'm giving up one of these other abilities that might boost my attack, or my attacking prowess even further. Um, after this one, this is also really hard for me, these, all of these abilities here that I'm gonna say are like really really good and if you get any of them you're probably good to keep it um, but probably next I would put food finder what food finder does is it makes it more likely and in, in fact I think it makes it guaranteed that you're gonna find some sort of food on the next floor maybe it's not a hundred percent guaranteed but it's almost <laughs> almost guaranteed that you'll find some food. Now, most commonly, you're going to find tiny apples, and tiny apples are not great. But this is not only good to increase your longevity in a dungeon to make sure that you will at least find some food and you will probably be able to get through without starving. Um, this is great for finding, like, fainted Pokemon that could join your team. Because you can give them any apple, a tiny, a uh, regular, a big, a perfect, please don't give them perfect apples. <laughs> but you could give them any apple and they will join your team. Um, I don't think that there's no noticeable difference between what you give it. Um, so it doesn't really matter. But if you're finding a lot of tiny apples, this is a great way to use those tiny apples to increase your team member size and you, all of these fainted pokemon are going to have rare qualities and as you can see by this tier list you can get some that have really really good rare qualities um out of it so yeah i really like i really like it um food finder is great uh it pairs really well with another one that i'm going to talk about um I'm really trying to think about what exactly I'm going to put next. I'm probably going to put uh, Leaf Half next. So Leaf Half, what this does is uh, any sort of max, if you have a max elixir, perfect apple, big apple, or reviver seed, it will give you you will eat it and you will get the lesser version of it back. You will get a max ether for using a max elixir. You will get, I think it's an, I think it's a tiny apple for eating a perfect or big apple. 
you will, and you will get a tiny reviver seed for using a reviver seed. Um, that's really good. Uh, it means that essentially you don't have to bring as much uh, of these items with you when you go into a dungeon. Like what you, one reviver seed is going to give you essentially a reviver seed and a tiny reviver seed. Um, one big apple is going to give you a big apple and a tiny apple. Uh, a max elixir is going to give you a max elixir and an ether, so you don't have to pack those lesser value uh, items. You could probably your longevity is increased by a lot, uh, as well as you get to decrease your inventory space. I am a big fan of. Not not your inventory space, but the amount of things that you're the amount of slots that you're allotting. I'm a big fan of that, and leaf half is going to be great, and it pairs very well with the next ability that I'm going to talk about. Um, and the next ability is small stomach. I, there could be an argument for this being higher. I don't necessarily think I'd argue that it's lower. What small stomach does is any any item that you eat and gives a, any belly back, even if it's only two, will fully fill your belly. This is a godsend <laughs> in a lot of cases. Um, if you, you, you almost never have to worry about belly. Uh, if, you, if you're walking through a dungeon and you find like a, pe a peach berry Pecha berry. I go back and forth on how I pronounce that. Cherry berry. If you have a plain seed after you've eaten a tiny reviver seed, you can use that to fully restore your belly. You could go from one to a hundred on a plain seed. That is ridiculous. Um. Yeah, like I don't know. I don't know how common food items are in Purity Forest or Joyous Tower or like one of those harder dungeons. Uh, in which case, small stomach might not be great for those, but I would say that like this is probably the best, uh, this is probably the best one to do with food, like food finders like it pairs great with food finder it pairs great with leaf half um it outclasses notorious uh what is it notorious restoration it's it completely is going to like outclass uh well i don't know if i would say it completely outclasses notorious fasting but um it like if you have this, then you don't need to starve. <laughs> you really don't. Because you you can find a lot of food items just laying around. Like I said, it could be anything from a peach berry, a cherry berry. Um, yeah, <laughs> like it's great. Um, this next one's kind of hard. I'm going to put... Not there. Notorious Healing next. What Notorious Healing does is it increases the amount uh, of passive healing you will get um, every time you walk. And th this one is going to pretty much totally outclass Funnel Fun. I don't know if Funnel Fun gives you a little more healing when you're in when you're walking through uh, a tunnel, but like there's th there really isn't any dungeon where you're just going to get slammed with so many enemies that it's going to really matter. Whether you've been restoring with with Funnel Fun or with Notorious Healing. <laughs> and also, like, you're probably, on average, going to get more out of Notorious Healing because you're going to be walking through rooms and not just tunnels all the time. So I think that Notorious Healing is great for really high-level dungeons. Particularly the ones that don't let you bring items. Because you are going to be strapped for what sorts of healing items you'll have. Like, it, you're, it's going to be very rare to find a citrus berry. And it's also going to be pretty rare to find a orange berry. So otherwise, if you don't have those items, you can't use those items to heal yourself. And you're still, you're, obviously you're still going to be taking damage. So 
uh, Notorious Healing is going to be good for that. It's also great because with Notorious Healing, you will be able to outheal Burn status. Burn, which does 20 damage to you after you take a certain number of steps, um, would, I think... I don't think it's completely offset by how much you normally passively heal, but if you use Notorious Healing, you will heal a lot more than 20 HP. And so when you take that tick of uh, burn damage, you'll, you know, you'll be fine. Pretty much. For poison damage, I, I can't remember exactly in this game if, uh, if you can heal HP if you're poisoned. I can't, I really can't remember. But I'm pretty sure that another effect of Notorious Healing is that when you generally can't heal back HP, like when you're in a Sandstorm or Hail, you can heal back HP. At least th that's what I that's what I think. I'm gonna check real quick. But if that's the case, then that's great. You don't. Ha it, it's gonna mean that you don't have to worry about weather bands. You don't have to worry about pretty much anything. Yeah, it makes, like, heal scarves really, like, it outclasses them. Oh, yes, I'm pretty sure... Yeah, so pretty much any sort of passive damage is not going to take you out before you reach the stairs. Um, and so it's really good. Um, I would say, like, the only things that I'm going to find better than it are pretty much things that... Uh, increase the amount of damage that you do because I'm a big fan of um, if I kill you before you kill me then I win <laughs> um, the last thing I'm going to put in A tier the rest I'm going to put in S tier oh excuse me hold on I'm, I forgot to put uh, leap ahead in I would probably put leap ahead mm, that's an interesting one I'd probably put it above uh, tight formation. Uh, I'm, so, I'm sorry that I forgot about leap ahead, but uh, what leap ahead does is, uh, if you're in a tunnel, uh, your Pokemon that have a straight line shot to whatever's uh, a uh, attacking you or being able to be attacked by you. Um, that's a really weird way to put it. Essentially, if it's a if you're the leader and you're walking through the tunnel and all of your Pokemon are following you, if there's a Pokemon that's adjacent to you that can be targeted, uh, you hit them. Uh, your party members will essentially jump ahead and get to use attacks on that thing without being able to necessarily be attacked by it. So it's great for tunnel strategies. Um, like. I love that these rare qualities actually could make it viable to just hang out in tunnels to attack enemies. Like, and it also is great for the sort of uh, strategy where it's like, um, well, here's a monster house or here's a Pokemon that's going to do a lot of damage to me. Or like a couple Pokemon in a, in a room. So I'm going to go back into the tunnel and uh, deal with them one-on-one, -on -one, like bottleneck them essentially. Um, so this is this really helps that sort of uh, tactic out. And Leap Ahead is probably the best of the tunnel attacking strategies. Now, me personally, again, I'm not in love with the uh, tunnel attacking strategies. I would rather be able to move around the dungeon, like in a room, because you're not going to find the stairs in a tunnel. So, <laughs> and you're not you're probably not going to have like huge big problems like a monster house in a tunnel I mean you could probably go re retreat back to the tunnel like I said but anyway uh last thing in a tier their actual like last thing in a tier not leap ahead which I put in B tier is rapid bullseye rapid bullseye is great uh if you have a pokemon that has a multi-hit move that could be a two to five hit move that could be Outrage or Thrash, which hits two to three times. That could be Rollout and Ice Ball, which hit five times in a row. I think it's five times in a row. Yeah. Um, that could be Double Hit, which just hits twice. Or Bone Meringue, which hits twice. Any sort of thing that has that 
hits more than once in one turn. 100% accuracy. This is so, so good. Um, it's, it's a reason why I like it. Uh, like, it, it kind of makes um, narrow focus not that good for me because a lot of moves that I would want to use in a in a tunnel is are like a lot of these multi-hit moves because they're so strong in Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. If you only play main series games, you might not understand why something like Double Slap or Fury Swipes is such a great move. But if you played PNT, you would know that like these moves are not that much, like one hit of these moves is not that much weaker than your average move. Like, double slap, one hit of double slap is probably going to do as much, if not maybe a little more damage than, like, scratch. Or it's, it's going to be very comparable. So essentially you're using, like, two to five scratches in one turn. And if that was allowed in the main series, that would be busted. But Pokemon Mystery Dungeon is Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, and they're pretty busted in here, too. The fact that you can, like, one of the biggest drawbacks of these moves, aside from maybe you could argue an incons inconsistent amount of hits for these two to five hit moves, but is that they have low accuracy. And with this, you don't have to worry about that. And you know what's great? Because it's 100% accuracy, it's super reliable. Uh, if you're in a situation where you're up against a Pokemon and you could kill them with your move, but you need to hit it, you cannot deal with this 90% hit chance <laughs> and, like, fail because it's, it just happened to be the 10% miss, you, you, you don't have to worry. You've got this move that's going to be 100% accurate. Um, yeah, it's just great. And if, like, anybody, like, lowers your accuracy... Uh, you, you'll be fine. I don't know how it interacts with the Whiffer status. I don't even know if the... I don't think I've ever seen the Whiffer status in uh, Rescue Team DX. They might have done away with it and just had it lower accuracy as a stat instead of like giving the Whiffer status. Um, I guess I could always play with Cyndaquil and use Smokescreen or just find a Pokemon that has Smokescreen and try to use it and see what it does. But... Uh, so I don't know how it interacts with that or if the Whiffer status is even in the game, but like anything that lowers your accuracy uh, Anything that boosts its evasion Like you know some some Pokemon would be spamming double team or minimize You don't have to worry because you can just slam them with a 100% accurate multi-hit move actually Really really good. So now this S tier. These are the abilities that I think are the best in this game. Um, I would say that Rapid Bullseye, for a Pokemon that relies on multi-hit moves to be good, so like Meowth is a good example, like Fury Swipes on Meowth is great. Um, Skitty, Double Slap, uh, Cubone's got Bone Meringue and Bone Rush. Uh, Heracross has Bullet Seed, which might be the best move in the game. Might be the best move in the game. I don't know, don't quote me on that, but it might be. It's got, Heracross has got Bullet Seed, Arm Thrust, um, Rock Blast. I, I actually, does it get Rock Blast? Might get Rock Blast, it probably does. Uh, or like, God forbid you find a Cloister with Skill Link, getting like Icicle Spear, and bulls, Rapid Fire Bullseye. I, I call it Rapid Fire Bullseye a lot, even though it's just Rapid Bullseye. I don't know why, but like, Oh man, imagine that, five hits with a stab, Icicle Spear, in Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, and they can't miss. That's really, really busted. Ice-type is so good in this, in this game. So, yeah, Cloyster might be one of the best Pokemon, especially if you can get it with Rapid Bullseye. The only issue that I have with Rapid Bullseye is that there are some Pokemon that don't get access to multi-hit moves, and we we uh, we we say a prayer for those Pokemon. But yes, Rapid Bullseye so good for Pokemon that do get it. Now, if you you know again, if you don't have, if you don't get any of those moves, you're useless. <laughs> like this this ability is useless. It would be a D tier ability. 
like worse than sales pitch, but you know, you're not going to put this, I'm assuming you wouldn't put this Pokemon on a, you wouldn't put this on a Pokemon that couldn't use it. And there are plenty of Pokemon that could make great use of it. So yes, it's, I'm going to put it at the top of A tier. So the last abilities, these are all great. Um, I'm probably going to put this one first, Brawl. What Brawl does is when there are multiple targets in a room, uh, it increases the damage that you do. And it, it doesn't really matter how close they are. If, it, if you have a sleeping Pokemon somewhere on the other side of the room, you have the bo like a boss crest Pokemon come up and fight you, you will be doing extra damage. Like, and it's not just like a little extra damage. It is a lot of extra damage. Um, if you end up in a monster house, your AOE move is going to be massive damage. Um, like Blizzard is probably going to one or two shot every monster house for you. Um, even when they resist the hits. It's nutters how good Brawl is. Like, I, you know, a limitation of Brawl is that, you know, if you're fighting one enemy at a time, it's not really doing anything for you. Um... To that, I say I don't care. I, I, the Pokemon that I have on my team that has Blizzard and Brawl is very good at what it does, and that's clearing out uh, mobs of enemies. So I really like Brawl. You, you could argue maybe it's A tier. Uh, you could argue maybe it's n like not even like just the top of A tier uh, because like you know. Maybe monster houses are not as bad in this game, or which, yeah, that's probably true. <laughs> any in any Pokemon Mystery Dungeon where you can push your team mates, uh, especially multiple teammates at once, yeah, monster houses are not as bad. But like, still, Brawl will save you so much with your A with your AOE attacker or attackers. Um, yeah. I'm really struggling with these last three. Two of them have a very similar ability, and this is one of the best abilities in the game. And one of them is just really, really good. Uh, and I would... I don't know. I have re a really tough time placing them. I would say Brawl is slightly worse than these three. Uh, because I just think that these three are so much... Like, so useful. Um, I'm gonna... Hmm... I'm gonna say I'll put I'll put this one first. Uh, friendly. What friendly does is it increases the likelihood that you will uh, be able to recruit a Pokemon to your team. Now, you might be saying, but I'm not playing this game to recruit all the Pokemon necessarily, and that's true. You might not be playing the game that way, but this game really, really incentivizes getting Pokemon for your team at low levels uh, in, in the early game. You know, having Pokemon, a lot of Pokemon on your team to go up against a boss fight like Zapdos uh, in particular <laughs> make, will make it really easy for you to beat that Zapdos. Um, or like, for example, like Groudon, really good for that. Uh, Kyogre, like, oh, there's so many Pokemon, there's so many dungeons with bosses at the end where you can recruit Pokemon, where you would definitely like to have a lot of Pokemon, and friendly increases the chances that you will get that Pokemon. Uh, get, or not get that Pokemon, but just get Pokemon in general. Um, <laughs> for dungeons where you don't necessarily need them for the boss fight, it's still really good uh, because, again, early on, uh, you can choose to bring them uh, to your team if you if you want them. Like me personally, I like to have a living Dex sort of of all the Pokemon because it makes me feel accomplished. Uh, if that's not something that you care about, or if that's something you've already done, you can say no to these Pokemon if you don't necessarily want them. If they don't have good rare qualities, or if they're just not a useful Pokemon, or it's just something that you're not going to use. You can get money for just recruiting them and taking them to the end of the dungeon. Like, 
that's great. That is great. And you get a lot more money for however many floors that you they got. So like, I don't know if you're doing something like Storm Sea, which is a 40 floor dungeon. You can recruit something on like the second floor, and manage to beat Kyogre and keep it alive. That's like, you're gonna get over 2,000 gold. Not gold, excuse me. <laughs> Poke for that. That's really good. That is really good. Um, like, the only reason, like, friendly would not be that useful is, uh, you've pretty much beaten the game. You've gotten all the Pokemon, uh, that you can obtain and you don't really want anymore. Uh, and you've got, like, everything that you could spend your money on and you've got plenty of money. Then, like, fine. Then maybe friendly's not that great. But you know what? If you've got that much completion, then a lot of these <laughs> are not that great. A lot of things are not that great. Like Gulp and Link Shop might not be that great. <laughs> if you already have the perfect like setups. But like, yeah, friendly is just great. And like even at even if that's the case, like these hard dungeons like Joyous Tower, Wish Cave, uh Purity Forest, you can recruit Pokemon in them. And recruiting Pokemon, especially if you can get ones with these awesome awesome rare qualities is just beneficial for you you definitely want that um so yeah friendly is going to be great uh we've got these last two and one of them is a very similar quality to friendly um but i'm gonna put this one in between just 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 to be like interesting about it i don't know steamroll Steamroll is probably one of the most useful rare qualities to have on any Pokemon. I think pretty much any Pokemon could use this and have success with it. What it does is uh, if a Pokemon resists or is immune to the uh, damage that you're going to do, they're not that anymore. They're not. <laughs> I don't... I can't remember if it... Um, if it gives you, like, just extra damage... Um, let me think. I don't, I don't know if it gives you, like, extra damage. Like, oh, not only is the move not resisted really anymore, but you're going to do even more damage with the hit. But the fact that you're doing regular damage <laughs> to an enemy, even if you're, even if it is just regular damage, that's great. Um, so, like, early game... This is, this is really good because your starters are probably going to be using, like, they're pro probably going to use their stab because your same type attack bonuses are the biggest additive that you can have, at least with, like, without abilities. Uh, 1.5 times multiplier for your stab versus, a, like, a super effective hit is only a 1.4 times multiplier. So, yeah, your stabs are going to be very powerful. Um, and, you know, you're, you're gonna have some Pokemon like Skitty or Meowth, which are very good starters, that want to use, uh, stab moves, essentially, like, they might want to use Echoed Voice, Payday, uh, Fury Swipe, Double Slap, um, but Normal is resisted by a couple things, like Rock Types, Steel Types, and, uh, Ghosts are immune, but if you have Steamroll, you don't have to worry about that at all. Yeah, so <laughs> that's great. Um, personally, I really like Cubone. Uh, and if I had Steamroll on my team, I could use Bone Meringue on flying types. I could use Bone Rush on flying types. I don't, I wouldn't even need to pack um, Smackdown on my Cubone. And I would much rather have something like Ice Beam. Blizzard, like how even like Fire Blast on my Cubone. Um, there, there are a lot of moves that I would rather have instead of uh, um, Smackdown, uh, and I would definitely be able to use them instead if I had Steamroll. Um, so yeah, like Steamroll's great. Steamroll, probably the best for offenses. Um, but the last 
rare quality and I know some people might scratch their heads because this is one that you can be guaranteed to get on the first possible chance that you can get rare qualities. Uh, if you use a gummy on your uh, starter Pokemon, the one that you're controlling, the one that they make a rescue team base based on your face, the, on the first day that you get gummies, you can get this squad up. Not not at A tier, S tier, definitely S tier. Squad up is so good. Remember all the great things I said about friendly? Well, squad up is just that, but it stacks. It stacks. The more Pokemon that you have, the more like the more likely the Pokemon are to join your team. So if you have seven Pokemon on your team, you got a very likely shot that you're gonna get an eighth Pokemon. Um, this is great because once you have like eight Pokemon, you can be really selective about what you can keep on your team. So you know, you get eight, eight Pokemon and somebody wants to join, well, whoever's the weak link for that particular part of the dungeon, you can just kick them out of the team and there you go. Um, squad up, yeah, just great, because you're, like, most strategies are, and most playstyles are going to favor having a lot of Pokemon on one team. In early game, you're gonna want a lot of Pokemon to, uh, like, help you out with certain bosses, like Zapdos, like, um, Groudon, uh, and etc., like I just explained for Friendly. In the later game, you're gonna want them for think you're gonna want a lot of Pokemon to help you out with things like Joyous Tower, Wish Cave, Purity Forest. Um, and also, if you want, if you're a completionist, you want to get all the Pokemon. This is great. This is fantastic. Now I'd say like now there's some like Kecleon. Right, and we all know that Kecleon is notorious for being a very, very difficult Pokemon to recruit because it's got such a low recruitment chance. Um, I would say Friendly is probably a little better for that because if you have Squad up, then that means that you have to protect, like, a, possibly a squad of like seven or eight Pokemon uh, from Kecleon, and you definitely don't want that. <laughs> you definitely don't want to do that, so you'd rather just take Friendly, which is just a boost on you. That doesn't necessarily stack um, at all. At, uh, it doesn't stack up on itself like Squad Up can. Um, just because it, it'll be a little safer. Uh, another, like a small issue with Squad Up is once you get past the main game, when Pokemon are defeated, you'll the enemy that defeats it will get the awakened status, and that you know sometimes it could lead to a Pokemon being mega evolved, but all the time it will lead to that Pokemon being stronger. So if you have a lot of team members, like if you have eight team members, especially team members that could get weak or that could lag behind in a long tail or a long chain uh, when you're walking through a dungeon, um, you're likely to end up having to fight a lot of awakened Pokemon, but that's not necessarily an issue with Squad Up. That's more so an issue with recruiting a lot of Pokemon at once. That is one of the downsides. However, I don't think it's all that bad. Like, for, for like, if you if you ever get, find yourself in that scenario, um, if you have like a chain of like five or more Pokemon, and the Pokemon at the back of the chain dies to an awakened move. Like uh, no, a Pokemon that uh, ends and then that, that Pokemon ends up being awakened. You're still a good number of steps ahead of that Pokemon, and it's probably just going to chase you for the rest of the floor. So as long as you don't end up cornering yourself or having really unoptimal movement, um, you'll be able you'll be able to just outrun it anyway. Um, awakened Pokemon are not super tough to deal with if you have the right sort of tools. Like if you have a stay away wand, that's great. If you have like a slumber wand, that's great. If you can put some sort of status on it, like petrify, that gets rid of the awakened status, then you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> um, yeah. So there's, there's smart counterplay. 
Now, I guess like if you're in like purity forest and those resources are really limited um, and you're just afraid that you're going <clears> to <throat> get an awakened Pokemon and not be able to deal with it because it's purity forest and you're weak, then mm, your mileage may vary. You might be, you might not be in a great spot for, uh, to recruit a lot of Pokemon. But even still, I think the fi the extra firepower and, like, I hate to say it like this, but the extra protection, like the, the meat shieldiness of uh, extra Pokemon is, is just too much to pass on, I would say, in a lot of cases. And Squad Up will help you amass a small army of Pokemon. So, yeah. And that, that's pretty much it for the tier list. Uh, I'm not super confident with some of the A and B tier placements. Like some, some things that I would be um, willing to change around. I'd probably be willing to change around a lot of things in B tier. Uh, squeeze Out is one. I like it. I know a lot of people, I, I know a lot of other people like it. I know a lot of other people don't like it though. So, yeah, I think that, uh, you know, some of the things I have in A tier could be switched around a little bit, but for the most part, this is pretty much what I would say is good. I would say if you're picking things from S and A tier, you've got to, you're, you're probably picking really good ones. Um, they're mostly non, most of them are non build specific up in S and A tier. So they're just gonna be good for general use. You might find that for a particular Pokemon or for a particular strategy, some of the B and C tier rare qualities may actually be the best for that Pokemon. Like, I don't know. Um, again, uh, if you're using Parish Song, Narrow Focus is a really good ability for you. Um, probably the best. Uh, but, you know, not every Pokemon is going to be able to do that. And also, like, I don't particularly like that strategy. I don't know if a lot of, I don't, I feel like a lot of other people might not necessarily like to play that strategy, so, eh. But anyway, uh, if you have any thoughts about this tier list, if this has help, been helpful for you, um, or if you have, if you want to discuss parts of it, or if you disagree with parts of it, then uh, please let me know. I like, I really like to engage with comments when I can. Uh, I know this is like kind of a small channel, so I'm not going to get a lot of comments, and I understand that. But, uh, you know, when I do get them, I really like to read them. I really like to see what people have to say. Especially if it's a well thought out comment. Um, so yeah, go ahead and let me know. And uh, I hope to be able to bring some more content to this channel. Hopefully it doesn't die on me, but yeah. I'll see you guys whenever I get the idea to make another video. Maybe a starters for DX. I don't know. I'll have to play around with a couple of the other starters and see what they're capable of before I can really dive into that. Because, you know, that's going to be a lot... You know, that could be a lot more flagrant. <laughs> a lot more uh, passionate on the part of some people uh, for what I have to say about that. But anyway, uh, thank you for watching, and... Uh,